Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of From Page to Stage. I am super excited to share with you an interview that I'm about to record with Payman Lorenzo. Now, Payman and I have known each other for four, something like that. Three years, and I would say. In that time, Payman has developed and blossomed into an amazing podcaster. So one of the things I wanted to share with you is not only is he a podcaster, he's also an author. So he has done the from page to stage, which is why we're interviewing him today. So I'm going to shut up for a minute. and I'm going to say, Payman, tell us a little bit about your journey that's brought you thus far, because you're sitting in front of a picture of Kuala Lumpur. Hello, Wendy. Always uh, happy to have you here. I'm really excited to be and on your show, and I'm very proud of you because you're one of my alumni, and I'm super happy to see. I've been telling you about podcasting for a couple of years, and finally you said yes, and finally it was fun. And yeah, so where do you want me to start? How far do you want me to go back? Um, just give us a snapshot because, look, okay, my first question is, what prompted you to write your first chapter? Now, I suspect that will give us a clue as to part of your journey. So tell us about that. Well, ever since I was a kid, I always loved books. You could find me in two places. I had a library on the football page playing football. But uh, I always loved books, loved, loved, loved. And long story short, 2020 in the fall, I launched my podcast. And then two years after that, you know, six months after that, I had Mary Gooden my good friend and my publisher on uh, as a guest first of all in summer of 2020 sorry summer of 2021 on my podcast as a guest and we kept in touch and I kept seeing her launching one book after another all of them reaching the highly coveted rank of number one national bestselling on multiple categories multiple countries on the first day I said what is this woman doing and finally and around early February of 2022 she we got on a quick call and she uh, she was able to find the right words to convince me to uh, to join, to, to be part of uh, my first multi-authored book, me as a contributor, which was uh, Sacred Surrender. And I told her, listen, I love writing. I love books, but can I do it? And she said, yes, she just write 3,000 chapter word. Sorry, 3,000 word chapter. Send me your bio, send me your um, your profile picture and, and, and your link. And the rest, I'll take care of it myself and my team. I said, that's it. I said, yes, done. And we did. And then that was the first experience. And then a few months later, uh, and um, and, and during this, uh, I got part, I also participated in the second book with Mary as a contributor, which was uh, uh, Revolutionary Readers, which uh, was launched in this, in, on July 22nd of 2022. Again, number one, around the world, multiple categories. And that's how I got into that. And then also around May of uh, 2022, I got on a call with Mary. We're just brainstorming. And she said, why don't you launch your own book? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, you have over 200 episodes in your podcast. Two years, you have all these incredible relationships, incredible stories. It should be very easy for you to fill them up. And I said, what do you mean? So just invite these people to, to, be, to share their story and your first book. And long story short, this is... The baby, the result of that, which was launched on September 30th of 2022 to celebrate the first two years. Oops, and 200 episodes of my podcast. And again, number one, multiple countries, multiple categories, and kept on going. And this is volume two, which was released not long ago, uh, uh, January 30th, 31st of uh, this year. Again, number one bestseller in multiple countries, multiple categories. And our good friend Snow is also part of this book. Super proud of that. And that's mm -hmm. how I got into uh, into books. And now I'm, you know, brainstorming with volume three. And also, as I told you earlier before going live, it's on the menu for me to do my first two solo books, one about my story and one about how podcasting completely transformed my life. So these are in the, in the, in the work for later this year. Cool. So what I'm hearing then is actually the podcast came first and yes. then the book followed it up. Absolutely. Okay, so with the the podcast, you got going, when was that again? 
I started in around October of 2020th. And I will just before continue, I will just tell you one thing because you, I know you work with with authors and all that. One of the most incredible hacks, life and business hack I heard is I was listening to a podcast one day and uh, this guy came up. He said, the fastest and easiest way uh, to uh, publish your first or next book is through a podcast. And both me and, and, the, and the host, we had the same reaction at the same time. And he said, what do you mean? And the guy said, glad you asked. I said, well, a 200 page book is about 60,000 words, roughly speaking. One 30 minute podcast episode about 6,000 words. So as long as you release just one 30 minute podcast episode a week, within three months, you have enough content to publish a book. Wow. And then give it another month to package it, promote and all that. So every four months, as long as you one podcast episode a week, you'll be in a position to launch one book uh, every, every quarter. So uh, every four months. So once I heard that, I said, wow, that's incredible. So I just want to share that with you and your audience, because that is an incredible gem that not many people know about. So if you have appeared on that, 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 that's from obviously from being a podcaster. But if you are not in the it, it's not on your on your agenda to be a podcaster. And in fact, some of the authors, in fact, a lot of the authors that I work with are reluctant to do the speaky bit. I'm an author. That's my zone of genius. My work speaks for itself. Here's my book. And, and my response to that is usually, how are the book sales going? Oh, oh, not not very well. You got to talk about it. You got to talk to it. You got to speak around your book. Indeed. So great. You're a podcaster. You I know now you don't have a problem with the speaking, but I know that in the past you did. And that's one of your tagline things, isn't it? That podcasting saved your business life? Well, podcasting transformed my life in every aspect possible, beyond the financials and all that. It, I used to be painfully, externally shy. Like people that knew me from before, when they see me now, say, what happened to you? Did you make a pact with the devil or something? Because you're all over YouTube and Facebook. I said, no, I didn't make any pact. I never will do any pact with any evil, but I just found my my voice, my purpose, my 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 destiny. And once you do that, you become the person you're meant to be. So exactly. this for me was the greatest gift podcasting blessed me with is just finding my voice, my purpose, my destiny, the process, building my tribe, my connections, and uh being able to have an impact and influence. And of course, when you put all of this together, of course, you're gonna the money's icing on the cake is gonna trickle on you and gonna rain on you as a result of all of this. But for me, the number one thing is finding my voice. Exactly. And overcoming so, my shyness. Yeah. This this is this is what I'm saying that very often authors are going, well, if I have to do this speaking thing, we do a bit of work on mindset first because I'm an author, I'm not a speaker. Well, do you know what? You can be both. It's not an either or. And then when it comes to podcasting, it's just the conversation between you and the host, isn't it? Mm -hmm. On the surface. Obviously, we've got the unseen audience that we need to cater for as well. And we bring those lovely audience people in while we're talking, which is why this conversation is really important if you've got somebody that you're working with. Authors listening in, if you're not feeling a, feeling a bit shy about this, podcasting is your first step to getting comfortable finding your voice and speaking about your work. Indeed. And here we have payment as a wonderful case in point. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. I I could have run and probably won the title of the shyest man alive back then. I would not have been able to even look at you in the eyes before. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about six, seven, eight, ten years ago. Sure. It's been a process gradually. But now I have absolutely no problem. Now mm -hmm. I have the other problem. I can't shut up. <laughs> Don't even start it. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So that was the first question was what came, well, first two, what brought you to this point and what came first, the podcast or the speaking or the, or the authoring rather. So we know that podcasting came first, then you put pen to paper and we're now four international bestseller contributory books 
and two solo books. Uh, two as a contributor myself and two as me inviting people in my books. So four in total. Yeah, but did you write in those other two? Yes, I wrote a chapter. Yeah, so that's it. You, What I'm saying is the ones that you curated, did you write in those as well? I wrote the uh, the, the foreword, the, the cha- my chapter, as well as the uh, the, the conclusion. And if, if yeah. that counts, the blurb at the back. And <laughs> So you've got four international bestsellers under your yes, belt. Yes, indeed. Yes. And you've got two solo books in the offing for this year yes that's okay that's the plan so do you have a um a target date for when you want to publish those probably uh i will work on the first one in the summer uh, and the second one toward the third and fourth quarter of this year summer which hemisphere don't forget we're oh speaking yes of yes yes so uh june july august i'm planning okay. on going back home in canada and maybe while i'm there in canada just typing those okay. so q2 the- q3 that you're going to be working on those yes indeed yes gotcha gotcha Thank winter you. for you guys in the southern hemisphere yes yeah that's why i'm i'm clarifying because we have a global audience i think it's going to be easier to go q1 q2 q3 global i would say galactic audience Oh, well, they don't even have um, seasons, do they? No. Yeah. They okay. listen to us um, uh, frequently, vibrationally. Through the ether, through the ether. Indeed. Exactly. Okay, so one something else I was going to ask you. Can you give us a bit of a teaser about what was in your first chapter? Because I know you have one rip-roaring story to tell now i know that not all of it went in in the first chapter and i suspect that you've drip fed it through the the fall that you've done so far and i know that it's going to be coming out in your solo book the first chapter is the little bit the first chapter that i wrote on in sacred surrender back in march of 2022 was probably the most personal of all because i shared a story of how my family left afghanistan i was born in afghanistan my father was one of the first people back in the 60s in Afghanistan to have a full scholarship for both his undergrad and postgraduate to study in France. He was an, a very successful arche- and highly educated uh, archaeologist, geologist, mm-hmm. as well as engineer. So uh, after completing his st- studies in France, he came back in the 70s to, to Afghanistan. And then he had a contract to go back in, 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 in France. And when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in 79, I wasn't born. But as we know, communists, they're not, uh, they don't like intellectuals. So they're just rounding up around and looking for intellectuals to make them disappear. And thankfully for us, my father was in France. And the way we uh, we left is literally worthy of a book, if not a, uh, a movie, because it's next level. And this is what I wrote about that on, on that chapter. Would you like me to expand on that or? Just a little teaser. Just a little teaser. Because when I've, when I've heard your story, do you know the thing that that, that came to my mind? Mm. If anybody's seen the film The Sound of Music, oh, escaping over the hills. Oh, this was big hills that we escaped. We escaped over the Himalayas. Yes. So, so the Alps are one thing, but the Himalayas are something totally different. So give us yeah, because the idea is that we would like to encourage our listeners to go buy the book. Yeah. So basically. I was three years old. My brother was one and a half and my older sister was barely 28 days old with my mother. And uh, sure, we had other male uh, you know, relatives with us traveling. So we uh, one night, we of course, we couldn't sell the house. We couldn't sell anything because the communists were all so the, the, uh, the Soviet patrols were always patrolling the soldiers and all that. So one evening we went to uh, one of my mother's aunts for dinner. We slept there. We took whatever we could, just the clothes on our back and a backpack. We slept there in the morning, went on the car, took it on the highway. It's not like here, you get on the highway a few hours later, you're safely at your local destination. No, we, once we got in the car at, at dawn, we started a game of cat and mouse for 10 days. During the days, we would hide in caves and shelter. And during the night, we would walk in the in, in the cover uh, and the refuge of uh, of darkness by foot on the back of donkeys, rafts, crossing rapids and all that. Ten days, a couple of times we almost got caught because my brother was a bit, you know, not uh, not he too was a quiet. Toddler. Yeah, exactly. One year and a half, and uh, so we had to uh, to uh, to avoid 
two types of people, one the Mujahideen and two the uh, the Soviets. If any of those were to catch you, if you're lucky, it would put a bullet to your face. If not, mm -hmm. ransom, rape, torture, whatever you can imagine it. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, after 10 days, we made it to the border of, of Pakistan. And I always remember my mother telling me, God bless her soul, she always told me that after 10 days, it was the first time that she could actually walk without always looking behind her, sleeping mm -hmm. in a proper bed without, you know, and eating proper food. So we stayed in Afghanistan with relatives until we were able to get my father was able to sponsor us to France. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you to stop there because I don't want anybody else to I mean mm. as I say, there's there's a tale to hit to this. So we want people to read the book. This is just a high level. There's so much more details that I didn't cover and yeah. and and things and all that and 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 and, 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 and the build up to that. Mm -hmm. I were betrayed by 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 a cousin just a couple of days before we did to fly. So uh spoiler alert, spoiler alert. This yeah. is all gonna be coming out in your your personal memoir, isn't it? Is Good it? question. I might. It's not a memoir, it's more like uh my story. Of course, it's it's a big part of my story. And I well, will that, that prompted me because I was thinking about it while you were while you were saying, because you were only three at this point, weren't you? Sorry? You were only three when you escaped. Yes, and my mother. My mother, How me, much my, of my this? brother, me, my yeah. brother, and my older sister. Yeah, yeah. How well, much? 28 days old sister. How much of this is your memory? How much do you actually remember yourself and how much you have been heard within the family? I get some flashbacks, some glimpses here and there, you know, flashbacks yeah. coming. And yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, I remember very, very vaguely because what can you remember from when you were three years old? Not well, much. Again, the reason I'm asking because I've I've got a similar experience, but I was two, and I didn't remember that mm. until I was gone fifty. Wow! It came it came up as a result of some very careful archaeology by my coach. So, I'm I'm fascinated to know those early memories. How, but particularly something as what's the word I'm after traumatic slash unbelievable for most people how much that we as children suppress those memories and they come up when we are as adults able to sure. handle them and for me as a three-year-old well back then I didn't know it but I wasn't traumatized at all for me it was the one amazing adventure right you know, your mom did a really good job yes 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 mm. yes so, so uh, and that, that's the thing. If 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 as adults, if we, if you're taking children through something like that, if you can make an adventure, oh wow, that reduces the 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 traumatic element to the kids. And yeah, I mean, well done, mum. Indeed, that must have been an even bigger burden for her to make sure that she she kept you guys excited about what was going on rather than thinking oh my word what the yes is and we had also other relatives helping us as well but of course the the, the biggest credit goes to my mother of course god bless her soul so yes absolutely yeah yeah so your mother's no longer with us she is with god she's been with god since 2010 2010 right okay yeah thank you mummy payment indeed mm. and daddy payment too because he played his role too yes he, you lost both of them Yes, and if my father uh, um, ascended in, uh, in in July of 2021. Right, right. I remember that actually. I remember us talking about it because you were you were going back to spend some time with him. You know. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing a bit of your Welcome. amazing start. Um, right. But uh, as you can hear, audience, um, there's more to it than that. Oh, big so time. If you go and pick up his books that are there already, you'll hear a bit more. But if you want to wait for more of that juicy tale, keep tuned in. Because over the over the period of this year, if Payman manages to get this together, and that I'm I'm pushing him for this because if if this is not what's in, what's in his book, then um shut up wendy but otherwise it would be brilliant to have this exclusive actually one of my ultimate dreams is to 
write a book, maybe even more than that, a documentary, just going around and interviewing all these Afghan families about sharing how they left Afghanistan. That would be very powerful. And I wish I'd, I, I'd, I'd, I had done this when my parents were still here, but hey, that's okay. Yeah. Well, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Exactly. But uh, yeah, because I mean, you'd, you'd be, I'm just thinking what, that was the seven, late 70s, wasn't it? Early 80s. So that generation are the parents, that generation are, are um, advancing in years. So, yeah. Some of my aunts, my cousins, my uncles, some of my uncles, and also there's a massive, massive Afghan community in, in, in Toronto, Canada, and of course in the US, mm -hmm. Europe, Australia as well. Mm -hmm. So I would love to fly around and just make it like a documentary series, you know, because the the plight of these people, not just Afghan, but any people that have had to, to flee to flee the country because of war. Yes. That's a, that that needs that's a, that's a that's a goosebump inducing story that needs to be shared so that. We learn the lessons and never again. Well, we both know um, a lady who fits into that category, don't we? Udrasella. Oh, absolutely. She's the closest to what I went through. And she's like a sister from another mother. Yeah. Okay, folks listening into this, if you're thinking, hang on a minute, we're just earwigging into a conversation. I have to give you the heads up. Drisella okay, is going to be one of our interviewees. Okay, so what a story! Oh my word, what a wonderful story! Exactly. So that's another one coming up. So we have lots of juicy conversations for you. What we'll do, we will give little snippets, little teasers of people's stories because it's these tales that you, as an author, have written down in your book. You've woven, you've shared those stories in your book, and now is the time to actually get out and talk about them. So, Payment, you're brilliant at your podcasting. Thank and you. one of the things that you do, it's not simply a case of you are a podcaster. You actually teach people the process, don't you? Yes, because podcasting completely transformed my life in every single aspect. As I said, the greatest way it blessed my life was allowing me to become the person I'm, I'm, I'm destined to be, but finding my voice, my purpose, my destiny building my uh my tribe and all that and also in the process building a, a very fulfilling business around it and that is teaching i work exclusively with coaches authors and uh, art driven entrepreneurs and my goal is to help them show them how to launch and monetize their pot the profitable podcast and youtube channel even if they have no existing audience no spamming and no ad spend. So this is what uh, I do in my academy. I've done, I've had my academy since uh, December of 2021. And mm -hmm. when I started my podcast, I had absolutely no idea, no desire, no clue how to monetize my, make money through it. I started my podcast because I was bored. We live, back then I was in Toronto, Canada. We live in a small town in South Toronto. And during the pandemic, Canada was one of the strictest countries in terms of restrictions. Thankfully, we live, we live in, a, in a countryside, but still, half the year you're frozen because it gets pretty damn cold. And so I had to, to find something to do. I don't watch the news. So I, and there's so many books I can read or, you know, movies or, or sports. So I had to do something to occupy my mind. That's why I started my podcast. And then after 100 years, sorry, not 100 years, 100 episodes and, uh, and a year. I've 100 done, episodes in a year? Yes, without making a single penny, people started reaching out to me, asking, hey, can you help me launch my podcast? So at first, I was hesitant. Say, go watch this video on YouTube and get this book. Say, no, no, I want you to teach me. What do you want me to teach you? I don't know anything. I just did it. Well, that's exactly what I want you to teach me. And one thing that really changed my life was understanding the tremendous power of questions and asking the right questions. And that's when I started asking these people, hey, would you be interested if I were to show you not only how to launch a podcast, but build your platform so you can share your story, display your expertise in order to, so you can connect heart to heart with exactly the audience. Is that something of interest to you? Even if you have no, no audience to start with. And I get the resounding yes. And that's what I get six clients in the first weekend and six clients in 10 days, so not, not in 10 days and 10 months. Mm -hmm. And, and, and all of that with a YouTube channel of less than 200 subscribers. So, uh, because again, yeah. Is, is is this podcast training, this academy, is this your main business now? 
It became that way. Yes, it became that way. It became that way because, listen, it, it provides a transformational result to people, helps them get leads on demands. If you have no audience, it helps them to monetize their podcast and their YouTube channel, literally building their own platform, their own you know, uh, advertising platform, their own cash machine, so to speak, their own lead generation machine. And of course, it's become a very powerful business platform for me and for them as well. <laughs> My website is full of glowing testimonials. Oh, yes, including one from me. Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful. I love yours. Yes, absolutely. Yours so is right at the top. The, with the, so that, that's actually being a podcaster as a host. Now, a lot of our authors mm. are, so they're not there yet. They're not there yet. Even podcasting is is going to be a bit of a stretch. So the authors that we've got listening in, thank you very much, authors. With the most of the people that we have, we were we attract are heart-centered people. These are entrepreneurs, these are coaches, these are people who have poured their heart and soul into writing a chapter or a full book because they know they've got a legacy message to share. So the legacy message then becomes a heartfelt, heart-centered way of sharing their message. Now, your podcast is called what? Leaders with a Heart. There you go. So how easy is it for our audience to book in and talk to you on your podcast? Well, very easy. I can share my uh, my Calendly, but best is to connect on Facebook. You can leave my uh, Facebook Facebook um, contact. But one thing, and then I would, would, what I usually do is I always get on a quick meet and greet call with them to get to know us uh, each other better. Mm -hmm. Also to, to, to further make sure that they are, a good fit for my podcast because I'm sure. nowadays I'm very very um uh selective. I'm looking for people who are sure we all have inspiring, empowering stories, but I'm looking now for people who have truly goosebump inducing stories and it's a difference and this what the kind of people I want to uh to showcase. And one thing I want to say one thing between the difference between being a guest versus having your own podcast because that's something that a lot of people don't seem to understand or, or underestimate. It's 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 beautiful for you to go on other podcasts. You get a short boost, but it's nothing like having your own platform because when you have your own platform, you get access to people that normally you would not be able to get access to. That's mm -hmm. something incredible. And that's one of the many, many benefits as opposed to, uh, as well as, you know, using the podcast. If, if you're a coach, if you're a uh, an author, if you're looking to fill a book, or get a speaking gig or whatever. It's the best way for you to advertise yourself, to advertise your speaking abilities. Hey, people want to see you. Hey, let me see how you, how you sound, how you talk, your ideas, what best ways to do it than yourself having your own podcast. And starting a podcast has never been easier. I make it even easier. I can talk about that after with my free five-day challenge that is coming next week, in Mar end of March. Sadly, we will have passed when this actually gets um, published yeah. we will past your five day challenge but i've no doubt there will be another one yes i run them once every six weeks okay like that and of course the best way is to just connect with me on facebook we get on a quick uh, meet and greet call and get to know you get to know each other mm -hmm. i want to know what is your gift what is your zone of genius and uh, and if you're a good fit i would love to showcase you on my podcast and even though and and why not later on in one of my future books for volume three four five and if you're ready to start your podcast i would i would love to extend an invitation for you to my next free five-day podcast this challenge thank you so as we were saying the being a podcast guest as you said is very different from being a podcast host it's and a good our authors will be working up to that maybe but to start with it's getting on to podcasts. So you've given us your, we'll pop it in the show notes as to how to get hold of you. You do a podcast challenge. So for people who actually are thinking, oh, oh, I could do this. That's a five-day challenge that you run every six weeks, just to recap. And then from there, you take people, I mean, you, you give basically the, the whole kit and caboodle anyway, but then you go through, <clears throat> you go through an academy. Much deeper which is much deeper and you have lovely guests on 
industry expert guests on top of your industry expertise. So this is the the joy of working with payment. And as I said, I'm one of the alumni. I can absolutely attest for this myself. So as we're winding up payment, can I ask you to share one nugget of wisdom as to how you embody, how you take your written word and bring it alive when you speak? Before even going to that, because you are, I will address that in a moment. Your audience is your motto, which I absolutely love, is from the page to the stage. Mm-hmm. So authors, one of the best ways for them to get the training, to get the exposure, visibility, the legitimacy, the credibility, and all that. Step number one, step zero, I would say, is get on other podcasts as a guest. Step one, and the big one, is get your own podcast. Because again, when you send... I don't know how it works when you apply for say TEDx or whatever, if you do public speaking or corporate training or whatever, of course they want to check you out. And if you have your own mm-hmm. podcast, that's a greatest qualifier because yes. hey, this person has, uh, has been speaking, they're good. They know how to be, to, uh, to properly behave in front of a camera, how to talk, how to, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to share their knowledge and all display the expertise and all that. So getting your own podcast is truly a game changer for you as an author not only for you to, if you want to go from the page to the stage, which is ultimately what you want, but also for them to build a launching path to much, much bigger things. Because you get access to people you normally wouldn't. You can get access to a joint venture. It, it, it opens the world for you to join ventures, getting on bigger podcasts, and then the big one, TV, radios, and so on and so forth, magazines. So again, a podcast is a no-brainer for any entrepreneur, anyone with a skill, anyone with a... Uh, with a gift, and we all have a gift, and even more so if you want to go from the page to the stage, a podcast is absolute no brainer for you. So now, as far as the second part of your question, how I'm bringing my what was the question again? Yes. Bringing my, okay. my to, to my question, which was give us one nugget of how you take your written word and bring it alive when you speak. For me, it's rather the other way around. Uh, I speak and then I share my knowledge, my wisdom, uh, my gifts through my books. So for me, it's been the other way around. But but my books and my podcast, they complement each other. They, uh, they're an extension of each other. And uh, for me, what I teach, what I preach in my podcast, I preach and teach the same, same way as well in my books. So um, I can't really label myself as an author per se that's not my main thing my main thing is mostly as a podcaster Mm -hmm. but uh i do have my 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 own solo books scheduled for this week so not this week sorry what i'm saying for this year later this year yeah uh but uh as i said in the introduction we don't have an an either or identity yeah you you are a writer you're an author and you're a podcaster now, you might put podcaster as your primary identity, but you are also an author. Yes. Four times international best-selling, I might add. That's an so, add-on, yes. Exactly. So this is the point. When I'm, when I'm working with authors who are reluctant to do the speaking in the first place, we're nowhere near having our own podcast. Just, just to give you the heads up, this is, oh, you want me to be a podcast guest? You want me to talk? Oh, help. If that's the case then I'm an author. Yes, and you can be a speaker as well. You can be a pod guest. You can be further along the line. And you ultimately, yes, you can be a podcaster yourself. And now an announcement I want to make, a mini announcement. It's the first, I'm going to make it first here for your audiences. One of the things I will add to my five-day challenge, my Academy Next is actually overcome the number one thing holding people back. And that is, shyness because I used to be painfully shy and also imposter syndrome and what you want me to get on podcast who's gonna listen to me who's gonna or, or talks who the hell do you think I am no no and that is how do you overcome that the very easy way to do it is make a challenge I'm gonna launch that inside my academy for the next round and that is I'm gonna be running a 30 day challenge every day post a five to ten minute video go live on your on your on your you know social media was it Facebook LinkedIn whatever just five to 10 minutes, talk about your business, talk about you, why you're doing this. The point for that is not to get business or anything. The point of that is not even to build your confidence. 
but to get comfortable in front of a computer, in front of a camera. Once you get comfortable in front of a camera, that's when you will become slowly, as you get more and more comfortable, you will become more and more confident. That's how you build your confidence. And that's how you overcome the shyness. That's how I done it. If you go back on my YouTube channel, you, you look at the first few episodes, not very good. The camera is right on my nose. It's dark. I have a beard that makes me look like 20 years older. Uh, you know, it's very dark and I'm, it's, and I'm, I'm almost like eating the, the microphone. I remember that. So uh, and again, I leave those on purpose so people can see the progress. <laughs> Even the biggest company in the world, Apple, a trillion dollar company started in someone's garage. Yeah. So don't let anything stop you. Just go because it's not, as I said, I used to be not only shy, but I used to be very self-conscious because of a big nose. I have no air. I used to be fat. And then I realized it's not about me. Are you? It's about your gifts, your wisdom, your knowledge, and that's why we are here to share them. So don't let those, you know, uh, out, uh, outside, you know, uh, outer external, things, external, external things. Validation. Yeah, don't let those or those um, those uh, vanity metrics or whatever stop you from mm -hmm. sharing your gifts. Because ultimately, at least from my humble understanding, that's why we are here, sharing our gifts with others, so we can all collectively rise and benefit from them so i'm gonna even if you don't if you want to implement that go live every day five to ten minutes on your facebook page if you have just two people your mom and your dad or your, or your, or your spouse or your, or your kids or, or your dog and cats it's okay it's 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 the it's the uh, the training it's the repetition it's the consistency that's going to build you up and uh, again the goal is not for you to uh to over to overcome overnight your shyness, it's to get more conf confident, more conf sorry, more comfortable in front of the, the camera, and as you become more conf comfortable, you'll get more confident, and that's how you. There's an awful lot of mind stuff in there. What are yes. you telling yourself? This is all stuff that I deal with. That what what are the little internal scripts that you tell yourself? I mean, we Good. we've spoken about this already. Um, off camera about the fact that my my voice didn't matter and it's those early scripts that I get to work with my my clients so that we look at the underlying internal scripts and deal with that first and then we build on the on the muscle of getting comfortable in front of speaking to people one person two people the camera the whole works mm. indeed exactly. yeah it all starts here. I heard a quote that said that the six inch distance between your, your your brain and your heart, that's the most powerful distance in the world for you. Because that's where everything happens, between your heart and your brain. The story you tell yourself, your beliefs, and all that. And where does it go? Where does it pass through? Your voice. Oh, absolutely. Three three places. Your brain, your heart, and your throat. Yes. Absolutely. Head, heart, and voice. So yes. on that wonderful note, we've brought, us, we've brought ourselves full circle. Thank you so much, Payman, for sharing your wisdom as a podcaster primarily and as an author. Four times international bestseller so far. We'll just tack that in because we have more than one identity here. Maybe primary one is podcaster and author. Let me stop you. When people ask me, and, you know, when I meet people, I love going to events and networking. I don't say I'm a podcast. I say I'm a collector. So what, what do you mean? I collect success stories, testimonials, case studies. What I do? And so what do you mean? So, well, I help my, my I help good people with beautiful uh, uh, hearts and powerful messages to win. So what do you mean? I make my clients shine, bright and shining to my pod, to podcasting and, and through uh, books. So what this is what I do. This is how I see myself way beyond than just a podcast. I see my podcast bigger than a podcast. See it as a movement to inspire other entrepreneurs to do good so we can create a better world around us by inspiring one person at a time. And then I see myself as a as a collector, connector, and a cheerleader. This is what I see myself as. Okay. So there we go. We've got three identities. Three my point being, it doesn't have to be either or we can have multiple identities. So it's not just an author. You can be an author and a speaker. You can be a collector of success stories. You can be a teller of tales, a sharer of wisdom, however you want to language it, and a sharer of wisdom. 
a teller of tales, can be written or spoken. Indeed. You're not confining yourself there. So let's have a think about how we can language those all important internal scripts as to what we actually do. Thank you so much, Payman, for sharing your wisdom with us from page to stage. For now, bye from me. <laughs>